Hello and welcome, my name is Steve Pugh and on this channel I mostly talk about business and entrepreneurship type stuff but I also love tech, I love cameras, I love streaming, I love podcasts so what I tend to do is also do really quick two minute tech reviews on stuff that I've bought so I've physically bought all this stuff myself just to give you my honest opinion on different kind of things. So I've used MacBook Pros now since 2004 which is 18 years which is quite a long time and recently just for a trip to America my 15 inch MacBook Pro died and it was a 2016 in model and it was almost but it was the day before I flew and it was what do I replace it with and I actually went for this so this is the 14 inch new MacBook 2022 models it's the M1 Pro model it's got 16 gig of RAM and I'll put the one terabyte hard drive I'll put the full stats on the screen and it was an impulse buy in some ways because I knew I needed the laptop. I couldn't have my other one repaired. The other one still worked fine. The battery had started to die. And at the moment with the chip sh shortages, you know, if you go into the Apple store, they might not necessarily have the right one for you. Um, just kind of feedback. I've had it now for about four weeks. Absolutely love it. The screen is so good. The 120 hertz promotion display, massive kind of jump up. The battery is incredible. I'm amazed at how long it lasts. Um, I would have ideally maybe gone for 32 gig of RAM, but especially with the unified RAM, 16 now works much more than a traditional old school 16 would have. So actually that's fine. And then I think the trap that I would have fallen into is that I probably would have up the processor to an M1 Max. And I bet you I wouldn't have actually noticed the difference. So actually I think by luck or by chance, I ended up with the sweet spot of the range. I think for most people, and I do a lot of video editing, most of it is 1080p, so I don't do really kind of complicated stuff. But the M1 Pro chip in this just blitzes through. I went for the 10 core one. Um, and actually, I just I can't fault the kind of laptop. In the end of the day, a laptop is a laptop, so it's only a tool for me to use. But in terms of a step up from what I was using, which was a five, six year old one, that was still fine and it worked good. But this is another massive jump that will definitely see me for the next kind of few years. Um, the other thing that I was tempted to buy, I was tempted to buy the M2 MacBook Air, but I'm glad I didn't go that route. It wasn't actually out yet, but there's been some questions about how fast it actually is. And then likewise on size, I didn't know whether to go 14 or 16, um, but actually I travel quite a lot. So almost in the bags, this is really super portable and light. But I think it's smaller and lighter than my old one. I can throw it in my satchel, go and do stuff, come back, happy days. The one thing that really put me off about the 16 inch was just the size and the weight that I think it'd be really almost too cumbersome to kind of carry around. Um, so would I buy it again? Yes, would I recommend it? Absolutely. Um, I think for me, when you get a good machine, which will last quite a few years, which a MacBook Pro generally will, often you know, the kind of base lower level stuff is almost you know more than good enough for most kind of people. I do do a lot of video and a lot of kind of high end type stuff. So I'm really happy with this, but you certainly don't have to go to the top spec. Uh, they don't do an M1 Ultra yet, but you don't need to go mega, mega powerful for this. At some point when I replace my studio office iMac, which is kind of fully spec'd out, I'd be interested in to see what they do in, with the M1 Studio in a few years time. Uh, but actually in terms of this, I absolutely can't fault it. Was it expensive? I think I paid £2,200 for this. I use Final Cut Pro and all of the other kind of stuff on. And the one top tip would be if you have Time Machine backups, it's super simple to take everything on your existing laptop, whack it across and it just works instantly from, from scratch. Um, also, if you can go for the bigger, slightly bigger storage, so I get one terabyte, but even though I actually keep all my data on an external two terabyte Samsung T7 hard drive, because your operating system and your apps take up a fair bit as well, I think it's always good to have headroom there that I can now back up my iPhone, which is 256 gigabytes, onto my laptop in a way that I couldn't do previously. Just because if your laptop is only 256, when it's got everything on it, you can't actually sync or back up your iPhone to it. So if you can, go for a bigger one as well. Um, so my name is Steve Pugh. These are just some really super quick tech reviews. Uh, I will do an update over time, just to let you know how I get on. But if you've got any questions or anything, please feel free to reach out. All right, cheers, guys. Have a great day.